Roscop Watch Assembly Part 1. Hey guys, Jacques here. I want to talk about the assembly of this Roscop Watch. So I have the frame put all together. So in this video I want to get over some of the details to get to here. This is mostly all the static parts except for the rewind, two of the rewind gears that are inside the frame here. All the gears, hands and everything else will come in the next video. Let's see the frame preparation. The first parts I want to talk about are those top bridges that will hold the balance wheel anchor, escape wheel, and some of the gears. Just going briefly on those tools. There's two halves. Both halves are the same. And there's a notch. And then just make a 90 degree bend on the piano wire. will come in the notch. There's nuts on the back side. So there you have your tool to ream the holes. The two millimeter and the one millimeter. Just the same principle. Don't make it too long or it will bend. <laughs> so this bridge is going to receive the anchor. So I have those two pins that's to position the, the bridge so it's the top hole is aligned with the one inside here. Harbour from the anchor is going to come inside here but I need to adjust the diameter here so I have very little play but still a nice free motion. To do that I made this tool that's a one millimeter piano wire the same as, as this. So I'm going to use this tool to shape the size of the hole. You might think you could just use a drill, might be easier, but when you drill a hole it's almost going to be bigger than what you want to get. So since this is plastic can ream with just a little bit of pressure and a little bit of patience. So all you went through. Obviously it's too, uh, it's too tight to have a good working watch. So now I'm going to do a rotation. What I want to get, I have this cat from FreeCAD that should show the shapes I would like to get. So now it's much easier. The goal is basically to fall out and I even have just a pin here. There's one tool I found quite useful to finish those little one millimeter pin because the I this is a knife sharpener that's a 1000 grit of 400 and a thousand but with this I can clean the end of the shaft 
and the idea is to have a rounded end on those. First make a chamfer all around, be flat and then start rounding. One thing to remember, they're easy to cut with your pliers, but when you cut it's going to flatten the end so and make it bigger so and then once you have your plates already you can check it should slide and it should come out without hanging at the end so you know the end is nice and clean ideally I would like the pin to be able to fall from its own weight so you can still increase the hole a little bit Obviously you want the, the you want the pin to be really clean, no nicks, burrs. Okay. That's about good. The second part of those bridges of those two holes for the pins. This need to be slightly tight but not too much you just want to put it able to put it by hand and it should hold but you can easily take it off by hand I'll have a metric free knight will come in the slot checking it centered holds it in place. The last thing is this hole that's a metric free thread. With this you can put a screw guides it so then put the tool on top of the plate grab the hole and then I can shape the thread. The thread is 3D printed in the plate but it still it still needs to be cleaned up so it goes easy. You don't absolutely need the tool but it helps to be square. Then I put little plate to cover the hole so when I put an anchor that plate will do the axial end for the for the anchor Having the plate mob mobile, it helps when you putting it together. That was the anchor plate. The balance plate here, it's the same idea. Escape plate here, just the same. And then this is for the two gears. One is a one millimeter hole, and this one is going to be a two millimeter hole. So again, with those tools, two millimeter here, one millimeter here. So that's for the top plates. The dial face is hold by two four screws, only have two for now. So the dial face. The middle there's the hands and then there's the gear for the arrow 
and there's a friction plate in here that's the friction plate to adjust the time so the middle hole needs to be two millimeter fairly free not too much play it's not too critical there's that gear for the arrow to the arrow hand and then on the back there's two more this one that will hold the barrel gear just need to clean it out this can be cleaned up with a drill the, it's not too precise here there's the ratchet shaft it's same it's not going through and then here is the two millimeter arbor for this gear is going to be here this hole here it's tapered to so also clean make it work the hole until it's free it's about good okay good enough <laughs> This assembly has the rewind gears So for the frames, those are going to be the two main parts This is going to be the plate that will need the most works and there's a lot of holes here, here and some more on the back to get ready. So the one millimeter hole that'll be the balance wheel here, that'll be the anchor, escape wheel and then the 1060 gear. In all those you want to use the one millimeter hole look at the back there's a taper the front it gives the precise one millimeter diameter of the hole so one two three four and then again work them until the tool can fall out some two millimeter holes here it's the other end for the ratchet and this will be the spring drum the main gear and then there's two pins not really necessary but those two pins align the three plates together so fairly tight second plate it's the one that will have the stem here there are two holes that need to be cleaned up here and here the balance wheel and the anchor will go through and the anchor will sit down here so now I have those plates the anchor will come here balance wheel Come here, the escape wheel 
come here. And then last, this girl will come here. So once I have those two placed together, this is where this bevel gear will come here. Will come here. And that's why there's that pin here for that gear. So this pin needs to be tight in this plate. On the other side there's the pin for the top bridges. So I can put this here. I want to put the screws yet because now this. So simply that was simply screwed together and then there's two flat sides so you can get in that will kind of hold then in here I have a screw and a nut I can put a pin I want the end of the pin flush with the end I can tighten the screw. So now this gear can come in here. I'll lift this a little bit and then this slide in. Then there's one more spot here to join those plates. And then the last piece just screws on. Also made a bigger one just because it can sit like this. One word on the 3D printing. That's a gear was just finished. There's a setting that I use in Cura. It's called Initial Layer Horizontal Expansion. It gets in walls. You don't want an elephant foot in the gears here, so the, that setting shrinks the first layer so it makes nice uh, profile on the gears this setting actually however doesn't work for the spiral spring because you want the maximum surface to the bed so I turn that setting to zero and doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of elephant foot on this. And then the last thing, when you position the spring on the on the plate of the printer, you want to make sure the printing starts right on the end. And it starts here and it goes along. You don't want it to start somewhere in the middle because that would make a weak spot in the spring. So that's really the only thing to be careful about that spiral spring. Also there's a lot of parts can be printed together but when it comes to the gears I like to do one at a time so that prevents having some stringing that goes from one gear to another when they're building the layer. If you just do one gear at a time it usually does cleaner tooth profile and very little 
cleaning to do. And then I print everything with a 0.4 nozzle, 0.2 layer height, usually three, three walls, 20% infill. And sometimes I still have some layer adhesion failure on <laughs> the first layers. So this one fell totally. So there's a couple more tools that I made for the anchor. This tool to line up the screws. I'll uh, add another, might do another object for the additional parts, the tools, and whatever else comes in addition to the files that are already made for the Roscoe watch. And maybe, maybe I'll have to do different version of the anchor when you start putting it together. Some people might not. That's the challenge of 3D printing, it's not an exact science. Different printers, different setting, different filament can give a part slightly different. And when we get to this, the, pre the, the size matters a lot. So that's it for this video. Next one, I'll put all the shaft together. I've already made a list with all the dimension, the length. So I'll see you in next videos. See how you can get to this, to this, and get it. I might try to use some dry lube, some interesting squeaking going on. Okay. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.